bless his name. Amen. Amen. It's prayer time, church. And we ask that everyone that is able that you would stand. And here at the sanctuary, everybody comes toward the center. The sides come toward the center. The center moves towards the center because we are going to connect. Yeah. 
for those joining us by way of the internet, and welcome to those of you who have joined us here in the sanctuary at Kingdom Square. My name is Sophia Jones, and I am the coordinator for the welcoming committee. And we are so excited that you have chosen to fellowship with us on today. The sanctuary is under the leadership and direction of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and our awesome pastor, Anthony G. Matthew. The sanctuary is a place that is spiritually alive, biblically based, culturally aware, socially sensitive, family oriented, and youth friendly. The sanctuary is a place where you can grow, a place where you can serve, a place where you can have an impact, not only in your local community, but also around the world. So allow us to care for you, to connect with you, and to strengthen you. Please take the time to fill out our visitor's card provided by our ushers. Place it in the offering basket or return it to the welcome center located on my right. So my brother, my sister, as pastor of this wonderful congregation of believers, I would invite you to prepare yourselves now to experience an awesome worship, but also to experience the love of God like none other here at the sanctuary at Kingdom Square. Welcome. Today at 5 p.m., we will fellowship with Macedonia Baptist Church to celebrate Pastor Garfield Burton's 14th pastoral anniversary. Pastor Macklin will be preaching, and the Kingdom Choir will accompany him. The church is located at 2625 Stanton Road, Southeast, Washington, D.C. Join Pastor Anthony G. Macklin every Monday for prayer. The prayer call is held from 6 a.m. until 6.30 a.m. The prayer call in number is 712-432-3447, access code 113385-POUNDS. Join us every Wednesday during the month of May for Wednesday in the Word Spring Revival. Our guest preacher for this Wednesday will be Dr. Henry P. Davis of First Baptist Church of Highland Park in Hyattsville, Maryland, followed by Pastor Keon Jarrell, Bishop Carolyn Shomel, and Pastor A.T. Bonadoro, along with our anointed praise and worship. You don't want to miss Wednesday in the Word Spring Revival. On Friday, May the 12th, 2017, at 7 p.m., the Women's Ministry will host an evening of explosive preaching brought forth by the Women's Ministry of the Sanctuary. Come and witness the seven encounters with Christ where you will experience womanhood from all angles, such as healing, forgiveness, obedience, love, patience, peace, and empowerment. As women, we struggle differently than men. Our walk is different from any creature on this planet. Featured preachers will include First Lady Reverend Peggy Macklin, Minister Rashawn Moore, Minister Sylvia Austin, Minister Samantha Cutler, Minister Daphne Jones, Minister Crystal Macklin, and Reverend Dr. Deborah Scarborough. Whether you are a seasoned woman or a student, this insightful night will truly have women walking away with answers to their prayers. For more information, please contact Minister Crystal Macklin at crystalmacklin at gmail.com and Sister Antoinette Huff at antoinette.huff at gmail.com. On Saturday, May the 13th, the men's ministry will celebrate all mothers with a Mother's Day car wash. Come and get your car clean and shiny from 10 a.m. until 2 p.m. For more information, please contact Brother Ernest Bridges at 
ebridges22 at AOL.com. We will celebrate Women's and Mother's Day on Sunday, May the 14th. Our 7 a.m. preacher will be our very own First Lady Reverend Peggy D. Macklin. Our 10 a.m. preacher will be Reverend Shalita Fumby of Reed Temple AME. All are encouraged to attend. Women, wear your red. The sanctuary will be attending the installation service for Pastor Anthony L. Holmes Sr. at the Loudoun Avenue Christian Church in Roanoke, Virginia on Sunday, May the 28th, 2017. The bus will depart from the sanctuary at 10 a.m. and return at 12 midnight. Dinner will be served at 4 p.m. and the service will begin at 5 p.m. Please see Minister Daphne Jones out in the narthex to reserve and pay for your seat on the bus. The scholarship ministry is looking to reward qualified upcoming graduates from high school for their academic achievement. Scholarship application packages and additional information will be provided in the narthex after each service. All items must be returned no later than Sunday, May the 28th, 2017. Please contact Denny Johnson at djohnson at apa1906.net or D. Malcolm Williams at dwilliams at atthesanctuary.com for further details. The Sanctuary at Kingdom Square presents Summer Camp 2017. The summer camp will last for eight weeks beginning Monday, June the 19th, and ending on Thursday, August the 10th. Children ages 4 to 12 may participate in this fun fact experience. The registration fee is $250, which includes one week of registration for camp and activities, $100 weekly tuition, $90 for additional children, $35 for before and after care, and $25 for before or after care. The activity fee includes daily snacks, all trips, Friday lunch, transportation, shirts, and activities. You may pay the cost of camp online by going to www.atthesanctuary.org and clicking on the giving tab, select other, and place your child's name. This will be a great experience for your children to enjoy. For more information, please contact Sister Danielle Peterson at dpeterson4213 at yahoo.com. Pastor Partners Ministry presents Book and Art Showcase. Join us in the Narthex on Sunday, May the 21st from 12 noon to 3 p.m. to browse an elaborate selection of books by local authors and artists. To display your work, the fee for a table is $25, which can be paid online at www.atthesanctuary.org. Please bring your own drink for the table. This will be the perfect opportunity to showcase your work. For more information, please contact Sister Paula White at 301-333-9033. Passings. The brother of Brian Williams, Larry Williams, homegoing service was held on Saturday, May the 6th, in Cleveland, Ohio. Survivors List. Brother Everett Lee is a patient at Washington Hospital Center, and Sister Comet Bobbitt is home from the hospital. Thank you for listening to the announcement. For more information and updates, please visit www.atthesanctuary.org Good morning, Sanctuary. Good morning. It's a blessed day, Micah Sunday, 2017. We got a lot of people in the house today. We got people from as far as the Carolinas, South Carolina, North Carolina, Texas, New um, York, Connecticut. We got people all over the coast.
after five, y'all. Just love them. Just let them know we love them. Y'all come on, help each other. Nobody's in a rush. Amen. And we have to be sensitive to the fact we've been doing this for years and have not had an accident yet. Amen. And it's, amen. We do not want anybody, amen, to have an accident. Amen. Because somebody was in a rush to get off of the parking lot. Amen. You've been able to get off the parking lot without any traffic all these years. Amen. And I hope and pray that you'll be sensitive, first of all. And then secondly, amen, there are... Amen. Hot dogs, hamburgers. Amen. We're going to treat our guests first. Amen. You didn't all of a sudden become diabetic this week. <laughs> but you know the church folk will get all mad. They'll leave the church because they didn't get them a hot dog all of a sudden. Amen. Amen. Entitlement does not extend to today. Amen. We're going to treat our guests first. Amen. And you'd be surprised, there's some real fun people here. Amen. I had a chance to hang out with them on yesterday. Amen. And amen. there's some real fun people here. Amen. Again, we want to say thank you. Do y'all feel welcome? Do you feel welcome? Yeah. You feel welcome? Yeah. God bless you. Come on, celebrate. Help us this evening. Amen. For those who have young children, for those who have children that are with you, we have a youth service that's going on. 
email right out this door, we've got security, nothing's going to happen to your child. They will be escorted back and forth to the bathroom. We will bring them back to you. Amen. So if you want to take your child right out this front door, amen. Security will make sure that you're directed, amen, to the room right next door with the young people. Amen. Minister Crystal is doing the message. Amen. Meet us at the Macedonia Church today at 5 o'clock. Amen. Our children are going to sing. Y'all sing good. I promise I won't preach long. Amen. We're going to look forward to a wonderful event. Brothers, the men have determined that since the ladies are going to be here on Friday night, Amen. We're going to wash your cars while you're in church on Friday night. Amen. Okay. Okay. Five people are going to get their car washed. Amen. Amen. Now, if you want a real good wash, get here before it gets dark. Amen. You show up at 9 o'clock with your car wash. Don't tell them what it might look like when we finish. Amen. But the men, we're going to do the car wash. Amen. From 5 to 8 on a Friday while the sisters Amen. I hear, amen, preparing for Women's Day. I understand the women are going to rock the red next Sunday. Amen. They're going to rock the red next Sunday. First Lady is going to be, amen, doing one of the message. And Shalita Fumby of, amen, the Reed Temple Church will be doing the other message. Amen. Now listen, last thing, and then we're going to move on. Amen. I want you to circle, amen, I think that's Tuesday. Is that Tuesday, May 16th? Amen. Tuesday, May 16th. Circle that on your calendar. Amen. Our church is getting ready to relocate, not because, amen, we want to, but because we have to. Amen. We've been told that the amen, project and the property, and for those of you who are from this area, you know that Hampton Mall has struggled for years. Amen. We came here in 2004 with the vision that when we leave this place, that the mark of the Sanctuary Kingdom Square is going to be on this place forever. Amen. On, on, on May 16th, amen, that evening, they will make the grand announcement. The governor will be here, congressmen, officials, amen, state officials, county officials, amen, our development officials and church officials will be here amen, to announce that we are underway. Look at somebody say, we're underway. Underway. $250 million is about to be poured, poured into this development. Stuff going to be torn down. Amen. Amen. Next year's Biker Blessing going to be at our new location, 5300 Grand Highway. This mall is going to be redeveloped to a million square feet. 125,000 square foot office building that will consolidate health and human services for the entire county. Amen. 300 housing units, restaurants, even a grocery store, and it's because of the sacrifice. Yeah. Let me say that again, because of the sacrifice and the efforts of all of the wonderful people who are part of the Sanctuary Kingdom Square. You deserve giving God some praise for yourself. And we want you to be here for that effort. All right, it's giving time. The God who's giving. Amen. God, He's given so much to each and every one of us. Amen. It is our responsibility as a part of worship to give back to God. Let me say, y'all got quiet all of a sudden. Amen. It is our responsibility to give back to God. Amen. What should I render to God?
Is that your testimony in here today? And everything that I have needed, God's hand has provided. Somebody knows that He has been so faithful. That means He's been consistent. That means He's been on time. That means He has never failed me. Look at somebody and say, he has been faithful. Isaiah chapter number 58, Isaiah 58. Amen. If you'd be so kind as to stand together, we're going to honor God's word. Isaiah chapter 58, and we start with verses 13 and 14. I read from the Message Bible version amen, of the word of God. Isaiah chapter number 58. And verses 13 and 14, it should be on the screen, just in case you don't have a Bible with you. When you find it, say amen. amen. This is what it says. If you watch your step on the Sabbath, and if you do not use my holy day for personal advantage, if you treat the Sabbath as a day of joy, God's holy day as a celebration, if you honor it by refusing business as usual, making money, running here and there, then you'll be free to enjoy God and I'll make you ride high and soar above it all. Would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, ride high. That's what I want to talk about. You can be seated. Right. My brothers and sisters in Christ, one of the drawbacks of the American dream, one of the drawbacks that people never tell you about, one of the drawbacks that you're never informed of when people are trying to get you to buy into the American dream, one of the drawbacks is this, you work hard. Okay, anybody in here working hard? You work hard in order to gain and accumulate all of the worldly stuff that you will eventually amass in life. And then, after you work hard to get it, you gotta work just as hard to keep it. Because if you only work to get it and you don't work to keep it and maintain it, eventually you will lose it. And keep working and you keep working and you keep working until you wake up one day in life disappointed. And very possibly you work up, wake up depressed because you come to realization that you're working all the time in order to keep and maintain the stuff that you have accumulated. And you eventually come to grips with the fact that eventually there's going to be a day when you're going to leave all of the stuff behind you. I know, I know everybody's happy today and we ain't thinking about it, but there will be a day when you close your earthly eyes for the last time and you make your final transition into eternity. There will be a day when everything that you've amassed in this life other than one suit, one outfit, one dress, you're going to leave it all behind. When you start thinking about that, it, 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 it starts to stress and press on you. And as you begin to realize that you work so hard that you never take the time to stop and enjoy all of the stuff that you're working so hard to accumulate in the first place. Am I talking to anybody here? Because you're working, and very possibly you're working and you're worrying all the time, your life has become a constant promise that you never keep. A constant promise to yourself, a constant promise to your family, constant promise to others that one day you're going to finally get around to enjoying all of the stuff that you're working to get. The truth of the matter is you live in a secret fear that that one day may never come. Do I have a witness in here? Can I be transparent for a moment and you won't talk about me? 
let me be transparent and tell you that it's one of the mistakes that I've made in my own life. I've worked so hard trying to provide for others, trying to provide for my family. I think I've done a good job trying to provide for my church, trying to provide for my community, trying to provide for my employees. I've worked so hard that I'm now coming to the realization that I may have forgotten something. I may have forgotten to provide for myself. And please, I'm not asking you to feel sorry for me. I only ask that you would take a moment and learn from my experiences while I'm in the process of correcting my inerrant behavior. I gotta straighten myself out before my time runs out. So, so, so let me help somebody here with my own testimony because there's no doubt about it. The Lord has been good to me. Okay, I'm talking about me, but would you just, would you just consider your own self? Would you just, would you just pat yourself and say, the Lord has been good to me? Not too many people that I know are able to enjoy the things that I enjoy. Would you admit it and testify to somebody next to you and say, the Lord has been good to me? Am I right about it? But what use is it in life to have sun decks that you never sit on, houses that you never visit, and vacation time that you never take, all in the name of pleasing people who will never be satisfied? And some folks they will never be satisfied. You can give them the shirt off your back and the skin off of your belly. They still ain't gonna be happy. Wasting time that you'll never get back. Locked into events and going places that you're really not interested in being there in the first place. Expending energy that you no longer have. Am I on anybody's street yet? That's why the days, I'm trying to hurry up and get you out of here by noon. That's why the days like today and ministry moments like this one become cathartic. They act as a deep cleansing moment for the soul because it helps you to clear away the layers of stuff that are unnecessarily a part of your life. And perhaps you got some stuff in here today that you need to scrape off in order to be able to live the abundant life that everybody sings and shouts about. For not only do you need to be able to enjoy the life that you already have, but I think I'm looking at a group who have made a ministry out of doing what they enjoy in life. Okay, y'all supposed to say amen for this one right here. I think I'm looking at a group of people who have made a ministry, who have made it a, a point to start enjoying what you do in life. And you still love the Lord while you do it. Okay, is there anybody here that know that you enjoy yourself? Yes. And you still love Jesus? You still love Jesus while you're in the Bahamas? You still love Jesus while you're at MGM? Okay, I'm sorry, excuse me. You still love Jesus? Touch somebody and say, I still love Jesus. I'm riding my bike, I'm headed to California, but I'm still loving Jesus anyhow. Is there anybody in here that don't mind letting somebody know that you love the Lord? We thank him for everything that he's done for you. But hear the words of Moses in Deuteronomy. Moses says, you should remember the Lord thy God while he is the one who's giving you the ability to get wealth. In other words, there's some folk in here that know somebody that's not able to do what you do right now. They don't have the health and the strength. Time and life has caught up with them. And perhaps we need to redefine wealth. Because wealth is not just how much money you got in your pocket. Check your pocket. If you, if you check your pocket, your pocket look like me. You broke. But wealth is not about how much money you have in your pocket. Wealth is about the number of friends that you have in your heart. And the number of memories that you make in your mind. Would you look at somebody for me and tell them I thank God for you. Because your presence in my life is making me wealthy. I don't have a whole lot of finances, but I thank God I got a few friends. And I like my credit card might be over instead, but I thank God that I got somebody that I can call on if I need somebody. Is anybody here that just thank God that you, I wish I had some help up in here. Anybody here just thank God that you got a friend. You got a friend. Somebody that you can call in the midnight hour. 
somebody that you can cry on the shoulders. Somebody that can help pick you up when you're down. Somebody that can help you to know that a better day is coming. Thank God for the friends that you have. Always remember something. Jesus reminds us that the thief comes. And he will steal. He will kill. And he will destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you might have life. And that you might have it more abundant now. Would you look at somebody and say, I thank God for the life I have. And I need to tell somebody, God did not give you abundance now and the promise of eternity for you not to have the time to enjoy it. So if you're taking notes, write these two things down. I promise I'll get out of here. First of all, I need to tell somebody, stop being guilty of being so busy, being who you are, that you fail to give yourself a chance to pursue what you have yet to become. None of us in here are everything that we ought to be. And I thank God I'm not everything I'm going to be. But I need to stop being so busy being who I am, not to have the time to pursue what I'm about to become. Okay, you didn't like that one? Okay, let me drop one more. Never allow your priorities in your head to suffocate the passions that are in your heart. Too many of us are chasing after our head and neglecting our hearts. And we're doing things because we got to do it with our head, but our heart is nowhere near. Would you look at somebody and say, if you're going to be with me, I need your heart to be in this thing. I don't need just your head, because your head makes you answer questions. But your heart will give you an experience that's full of quality. Joel Osteen, everybody know who Joel Osteen is? In his book, Your Best Life Now, he says to every believer, you must learn to follow your heart and stop letting other people pressure you into being something that you are not. If you want God's favor in your life, you must be determined to be the person that God wants you to be. Not the person that your boss wants you to be. Not the person that your spouse wants you to be. Not even the person that your parents want you to be. Stop allowing outside expectations to keep you from following your heart. Okay, I need to talk to somebody, smile at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you got to learn in life to follow your heart. You can't follow everybody else's heart, you got to follow your heart. Especially when you know that your own heart is in tune with the heart and the will of Almighty God. Is anybody here that know that your heart is in tune with the heart of Almighty God? So, so it was while I was preparing in the process of getting this message together, and I hope it's a proper message for today's occasion, I came across this scripture that arrested me in my Christian life development. Listen to the conclusion of what Isaiah says in chapter 58, and then we're going to walk through supporting scriptures, and we're going to be out of here in about 20 minutes. Isaiah says in verses 13 and 14 that it is possible that there is a point in your Christian life development where you will be able to be free to enjoy God. That ain't gonna mean a whole lot to a whole lot of folks. Let me try that again. Because everybody that's enjoying church ain't necessarily enjoying God. Just because you enjoy the choir don't mean you enjoy God. Just because just you enjoy the preacher, just because you enjoy the ride, don't mean that you enjoy the religion. Everybody is not free to enjoy God. But Isaiah said that there is a point where you will no longer be bound by unfair expectations of religion. That you will no longer be hindered by the hurts that will not release you from your past. That you will no longer be cowering behind the commentary what somebody else said about you. Okay, is there anybody else in the building other than me who know that you are at a point in life where you just want to be free to enjoy yourself in the Lord? Okay, I got y'all. I got y'all. It's a perfect section over there. Uh, does anybody here to know that you just want to be free yes. to enjoy the Lord? Yes. The Pentecostals wrote a song about it. You want to hear it? They used to sing, I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. They sing it again, I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. They said, I'm feeling kind of happy. I'm feeling kind of glad. I'm enjoying Jesus. Hallelujah. Is there anybody in here that if you don't enjoy anything else about today, I'm going to enjoy Jesus. 
Tuan who died for me, the one who woke me up this morning, the one who looked beyond all of my faults. I didn't come here because I was perfect. I came here because I love the Lord who is perfect. And, and, and it doesn't matter whatever it is, how short I come sometimes, because all of us come short. Don't y'all look at me funny. All of us come short. But I thank God that his love covers all of my shortcomings. Man, I need you to help me to get to that place, Isaiah. Because perhaps there's somebody here who's willing to admit. Is anybody that knows you enjoy your family? I thought I'd hear a little bit more than that. Is anybody, okay, some of y'all just came here to get away from your family, but anybody here know that you enjoy your family? Anybody enjoy your career? Anybody enjoy your church? Okay, that, that sounds a little better right there. Are you willing to admit that you enjoy going out to eat? Yeah. Don't lie to me, I see it all over your face. And you stand up, we'll be able to see it around your waist. There is a level. Perhaps there is a place that I have not quite yet reached in life. And that is the place where I enjoy my life in the Lord. And you're gonna keep preaching every year for 30 years. And I'm not enjoying this thing. I ain't gonna keep coming to church every Sunday morning because I'm not enjoying this thing. When I call him, he's always there when I need him. He's there every time I question him, he gives me an answer. The old folks say, he walks with me. He talks with me. And people ride their bike, you gotta have him ride with you sometimes. But there's still a level of place that I've not reached. Well, I'm free to enjoy the walks and the rides to a place where I can just sit there and enjoy his company. You know, because we spend a whole lot of time, you can't say this, the truth of the matter is, you spend around a whole lot of time around folk that get on your nerves. And you be talking to the Lord, Lord, I wish you'd get rid of them, but they get on my nerves. And the Lord said, get rid of yourself and spend some time with me because I'll give you a joy, unspeakable joy. There's still a place. Tell somebody say there's still a place. There's still a level that I have not reached. A place that's beyond all of my stresses and my worries. A place that's beyond my being busy, tired, stressed, and exhausted all the time. A place where my mind, my body, and my spirit are at one with Jesus Christ. I had to tell a couple the other day, uh, cause they was having some problems, and I said, hold on y'all, man, they was in there, they were in their late 20s. I said, y'all married? Uh, they, they said, yeah. I said, what did you get married for? Uh, so we can enjoy each other. I said, stop complaining and do it. <laughs> what do you mean you too young and you too tired to enjoy your marriage? Man, when I was that age, I was giving it every chance I could get. Don't you make me tell the truth up in here and you ain't hit me something wrong with you. I was with you and now I'm old, but I've never seen it forsaken. If you run around here begging for bread, you better do what God has enabled you to do. Run out here talking about you tired. Get the bread. to myself. Y'all think they have to do that. And y'all say, I don't believe the preacher said that. And, and I'm saying, I don't believe that you ain't thinking that. Are you listening to me? Watch yeah. this. There are several scriptures that we read daily about relaxing and not stressing in life. Remember Jesus saying in Matthew chapter 11, he says, come unto me, all you who are weary. If you're tired, you ought to be going to church. You ought to come to Jesus. He said, you're weary and you're heavy laden. You're carrying a whole lot of stuff. And he says, I will 
give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. And learn of me. Jesus said, you gotta learn how to relax. You gotta learn how not to be stressed out all the time. He said, for my yoke is easy. And my burden is okay. I remember David, the psalmist saying in Psalm 37, he said, fret not yourself because of evil doers. Neither be envious of workers of iniquity, for they will soon be cut down like grass and wither like the green herb. I, I got a little worried last week because my yard was looking kind of bad. I, I told the congregation that they accidentally fertilized it twice in two weeks, and, and all of a sudden it started raining, and my grass started growing all over the place. And, and my, my yard was looking kind of kind of bad in that neighborhood, and, and it looked like the grass had grown wild. And we started calling the, the cutting man and said, man, when are you going to call? Cut, come and cut. And, and, and he said, he said, don't worry about it, Reverend. He said, because I got you on my schedule. Okay, you just missed what I just said. I want to serve notice to somebody in here who's worried about the stuff that seems to be running wild in your life. The Lord says, don't worry. He may not come when you want it, but he will get there right on time. He says, don't worry. Because you are on his schedule. And he's going to get to you at the appropriate time. And at the appropriate time, everything that seems to be running wrong in your life is about to be cut down. My God, I feel like praising him right there for myself. Jesus says it one more time. In Luke chapter number 12, he says, take no thought. Stop worrying about what you're going to do, what you're going to wear, and what you're going to eat. For Jesus says that Almighty God knows what you need before you ask. Is there anybody in here that's not ashamed to admit? In fact, look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't think bad of me because I know I got some needs. I know I got some needs. And don't try to fake me out because all of us in here got some needs. But the good thing here today is that Almighty God knows what you need even before you ask. And I'm not ashamed to admit that every now and then I find myself in full-blown worship Sing that old school church song that says, I need thee. Oh, I need thee. Every hour, I need thee. Oh, bless me now, my Savior. I come to thee. Isaiah prophetically shares this word of wisdom for all of us as he attempts to show us not a better way, but he attempts to show us a balanced way. You may not always need better, you might need balance. As he says in verse number 11, he says, if you learn to do things God's way, not only will he show you which way to go, but he will give you a full life in empty places. You just missed that. Places that appear to be empty. God says, I'll fill that empty place up for you. Yes. He will give you a full life. What other people see as nothing, God will allow you to see as everything. You didn't hear what I just said. Okay, Richard Smallwood wrote a song about it in Psalm 65. He used those words, and every time I hear those words, the Spirit literally moves me. He says, oh Lord, you are my everything. Praise waiteth for you, my King. Oh thou who hearest every prayer. Oh Lord. You are my everything. You are my light in darkness. In the midst of darkness, you are my help. You are there in my times of trouble. Where would I be if it had not been for your mercy? Oh, Lord. Thank you, Brother Brown. Nobody else get happy. You and I will get happy. You are my everything. It is a place in the Lord that has taken a whole lot of us a little time to get to. But when you finally get there, God will take you to a place that seems to be empty to everybody else. But God will make that place full to you. Full of joy. Full of peace. Because the joy of the Lord is my strength. Full of His grace. Full of His favor. Full of memories. Full of opportunities. Full of experiences full of the presence and the promises of God because he does not say uh, that he ain't gonna keep you but he is a keeper anybody know he's a keeper? Jews say now unto him who is able to keep you from falling 
He says, I will keep you in perfect peace if you keep your mind stayed on him. And when your mind is on the Lord, places that seem to be barren to other people will be places that appear to be blessed to you. Places that appear to be moments of misery to everybody else. They will be moments of ministry to you. But look at what else he prophetically says in this text. He says, watch your step on the Sabbath. And don't use my holy day for your personal advantage. God has already ordered and ordained before you and I were even born. That there should be a day in the week that you take the time to honor God. Okay, I thought I'd have a couple in church folk up in here. There ought to be a day in the week that ain't time for little league basketball, ain't time for shopping, ain't time for watching my car. He said there ought to be a day in your week that is set aside as a day of worship, a day of thanksgiving, a day of praise. And look at what he says. He says, if you treat that day as a day of joy, would you help me to look at somebody and say, I'm tired of looking at church folk that act like it's killing them to come to church. You ought to treat God's day like payday. You ought to treat God's day like, like okay, I can't say that one. You, you ought to treat God's day like you know that the Lord is blessing you somehow. You ought to treat God's holy day as a day of celebration. Am I right about it? You want to treat God's day and honor God's day by refusing to do business as usual. Or in other words, you want to do something unusual on the Lord's day. Don't do the same old, same old thing. Then he says you will be free to enjoy God. I mean, this is the day that the Lord has made. Did he make the day? Yes, he did. You want to rejoice and you want to be glad in it. And my question to somebody in here today is, when was the last time you really felt free to enjoy the Lord? Now, nah, I need some answers right here. When was the last time you really felt free to worship the Lord? When was the last time you worshiped him and you weren't looking around to see who was going to talk about you? And who was taking pictures of you, putting it on Instagram? And who was periscoping you? Look at somebody and tell them, I don't care what you do. Because when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he has done for me, I, I can get out of here in 10 minutes if you help me. My soul cries out. It cries hallelujah. When was the last time you felt free in praising the Lord? For the Bible says, let everything, let everyone, let all of us that have breath praise the Lord. I mean, if the, if the AKAs can do their little hollers, and if the Qs can do their hollers, look at somebody and say, I don't know about you, but I thank God for where he's bought me from. And I don't mind every now and then hollering for the Lord. Look at somebody and say, every now and then, he's just so good to me that it makes me want to holler. Am I right about it? shame in my game. No constraints, no limits, no boundaries, nobody criticizing me, nobody judging me, nobody holding me back, nobody hindering me. In fact, would you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, stop living your life like your own trial. Ain't nobody judging you for what you got on. Ain't nobody judging you for what you driving. Ain't nobody judging you for how you smell. Rid yourself of people who always want to be judge, jury, and executioner. Free yourself of everyone and everything that keeps you from enjoying the Lord. Take time to honor God. Take time to worship God. Take time to free yourself up for God. Take time to love God. In fact, I heard the writer say, I love the Lord. She heard my cry and pitied every one of my groans. Long have I lived while trouble rise. I 
salvation to his throne. And most of all, you ought to take time to enjoy God. Would you touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, when I'm riding my bike and I'm looking up to nature and I see the clouds in the sky and I see how the weatherman said it was going to rain, but the Lord said not so. My God, I feel pretty now. I'll put the sunshine in the sky. You want to take the time to enjoy God. Smile at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm just like David. I would have fainted. I would have given up. I would have lost my mind had I not believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And if you haven't seen it yet, just wait on the Lord and be of good courage and he will look at your name. I need some help from that section back there. And tell him he will strengthen your heart. David says, God will want to do it. Isaiah comes back and says, you're going to be free to enjoy God and he'll make you ride high and soar above all of it. Is there anybody in here that know you got some stuff that you need to soar above? I got some issues that keep on worrying and weighing me down. But I thank God for a word that says I'm going to soar above it because I'm about to ride high. Touch your neighbor and say, neighbor, you going to ride high. Now let me clarify some things. Because riding high has nothing to do with being intoxicated, inebriated, or under the influence of any controlled substance. Because when you're riding high in the law, and you got a right relationship with the law, you don't need a weed. You don't need no cocaine. You don't need any capacity head to enjoy yourself. Because I got something on the inside that ain't a controlled substance. I got something inside of me that I can't control. I'm trying to control it right now. And I got some church members that don't want to embarrass themselves in front of my guests. But touch somebody and say, every now and then that uncontrolled spirit uh, called the Holy Ghost get the welling up in me. Am I right about it? So Isaiah says riding high. He means that the level that I'm riding on will begin to reflect and impact that paradigm that I want to live on. I want to live better than I'm living right now. Am I talking to anybody? I want to do better than any time I've done in my life. The old songwriter says, my heart has no desire to stay. When doubts arise and fears dismay, though some may dwell where these are found, my aim, my goal is for higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. I'm going to ride high, and I'm going to soar above it all. Every lie that's been told on me, every accusation uh, that's been thrown at you, every trap that's been set for you, God says there will be a level, there will be a place that is above it all. A place where you go from making excuses and you start having experiences. Is there anybody in here that thank God for the experiences? Because I'm tired of the excuses. A place where I don't have to explain myself because of my activities of my life will adequately express just who I am. A place where I'm no longer wake up in the moment feeling helpless and hopeless, but I wake up happy because I know that this moment when I rode, I didn't have no doubt. I knew that the Lord would take care of me, that the Lord would provide for me. 
that the Lord would lead me and guide me all the days. Touch somebody and say, it's a place where I feel empowered. It's a place where I feel liberated. David said in Psalm 18 that there's a place in the Lord where I can run through a troop and I can leap over walls. And later on he said that God has girded me and has given me strength and made my feet like hind feet and sets me on high places. I got this old minister. He's up in age now. He's in his seventies. But every now and then, he amazes me. His name is Hines. And every now and then, something happened to his feet. And his feet get kind of light. And he gets to jumping around, praising and worshiping God. I need to look at somebody and say, I thank God that every now and then that he puts running in my feet and he puts clapping in my hands so the message to somebody today is look at your neighbor and say neighbor aim high shake another neighbor's hand and say neighbor ride high hug somebody on the other side of you and say neighbor reach high and then touch yourself and say, I'm going to soar high. People won't be able to understand. And all you know is that you can't wait to get there. Touch somebody and say, I can't wait till I get to my place where I'm free to ride. I'm free to soar. I'm free to glide above everything that's trying to hold me down. There's an old school song. We sang it at graduation. Back in the late 78, we sang it, Joe Crocker wrote it, and church people adopted it. My wife and I sang it at our wedding to each other. They said, who knows what tomorrow holds in a world where a few hearts survive. All I know is the way I feel, and if it's real, I want to keep it alive. But the road is wrong. And there are mountains in my way. But we climb them higher day by day. Okay, you don't know those words? Let me give them to you the way you know. Lord, lift us up where we belong. Where the eagles fly on a mountain high. Lord, lift me up where I belong. Far from the world below. Where the clear winds blow. And then they said, time goes by. And sometimes we cry. But God will wipe the tears from our eyes. They said, Lord, lift us up where we belong. Where the eagles fly. On the mountain high. And I'm through when I tell somebody, look at your neighbor. And say, neighbor, you didn't come here to live alone. Get 
my word. You honor me on my day. You come to church and then you get on your mic. He said, I'll make you ride in high places. And when you start that mic up, just, just read it a couple of times for the stuff that you need to leave behind. That employee just got on your Sometimes you gotta rev it up and leave some stuff there. There's invitation extended, there's invitation extended, there's invitation extended. Feedback. And, and, and they will tell you that I'm the biggest advocate of this ministry. Thank God, I, amen. I can't, I can't ride two wheels, but I ride four wheels. Amen. Folks will look at me and say, what's wrong with you riding four wheels? I said, the Lord just blessed me to be able to afford four. I said, I ride behind them, sometimes I break down. Amen. But you know what? I enjoy my breakdowns in life. Because I know that those breakdowns are just temporary. If you look at your neighbor, I said, neighbor. I may have broke down in life a couple of times. But that's just a temporary breakdown. Because I'm getting back up again. There's somebody here right now. You don't have a church, you don't have a pastor. You don't have a church, you don't have a pastor. You don't have a relationship with God. And you've never understood that God meant for you to enjoy your life. Church folk will have you believe unless you have a white shirt on. And all the ones that got white shirts on the ones that didn't answer my phone call yesterday because I told them all to dress down. Unless you got a white shirt on, unless you're sitting on the front row behind them, yeah, come on up ribbon, come on up in ribbon. They'll make you think that you ain't living right. But all of us got struggles. And some of us have a savior for our struggle. But you look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, do you have a savior? You have Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? If not, I invite you to come and accept Him today. No, no judgment, no values, no, no hocus pocus. Amen. This is not a ten dollar, fifty dollar, hundred dollar prayer line. No, this is for us to pray for those who want to accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. I don't have a church pastor back home. I don't have a church anywhere. I'd be so glad to be a part of this church. I'd be so glad to be a part of Amen Biker Church in Charlotte, North Carolina. You know, they're pastors. You know, they don't have pastors. They're pastors who have left. You know, in fact, I see some of our 7 o'clock members. They took their suit off and went home and got their bike with you. Amen. All you pastors, like, come down here, fellas. He's like, all presidents. President Jesse James. Amen. President Taz. Got some lady presidents. We would have had a lady president had all y'all voted, but y'all have voted 2018, do not you? Amen. 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 Come on, Pastor. Amen. Come on, Pastor. Here's the prayer, and then we're going right outside. Amen. We're going to bless the bikes, and we're going to have some fun and fellowship. Amen. Would you hug somebody while you're standing, first of all? Amen. Because, amen, we take it for granted that we made it here safe. Amen. But we need to make sure. Come on. Amen. Pastor E is going to pray. Savior Jesus Christ in prayer. 
Man, I love to see you. Jesus Christ. First of all, we want to pray for all the fallen riders, the ones that's not here with us. We want to lift up their families up high. We want to continue to fellowship with their families to know that we love them, we care for them, and we're always going to have them in our heart. God, we thank you for Kingdom Nights Motorcycle Ministries. We just travel across this country, we just fight for so fight for We simply just got one mission. That's to ride our motorcycles and serve Jesus Christ. We have no other authority but the authority of what Jesus Christ has done for us. Continue to just reach out to these bikes, God. Spread the Holy Spirit, spread the hate. They look for a home, they look for a place, and they look for a meaning and purpose in life. Let them know that Jesus Christ truly is in their heart. He loves them. He cares for them. He want to be with their wives or their husbands or their kids. Because he knows that everything that you have in life is because Jesus Christ sent you just love you. Every bike that you get on, every dream that you have, every poem that you want, every handlebar and stern wheel, 32 inch wheel you want, you have it because Jesus Christ gave you the vision and the ability to have it. So why not love him? Why not embrace him? Why not cherish him? Because he's giving you something that somebody else may not have, and that's his son. So that you can walk with him, ride with him, travel across this country. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we bless these wives. We want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you for what it could have been, but you brought them here. Thank you for what they could have done, but you woke them up. Thank you for the place they thought they should have been, but you made it hoping that they'd be here with us. For them to shake our hands and hug us, for us to love them and reach them, for us to teach them and smile upon them. We thank you. We thank you for letting your son just come to this earth and give us a hug. We thank you for your son coming to this earth and giving us a vision, giving us a hope and a desire and a place to go. Our Lord say that Jesus Christ, we pray for these presidents and these vice presidents who have a hard time, God, just keeping it together. Sometimes nobody even thinks of what they go through. Everybody else want to do everything, but they want to look to the president to do it all. And we know that's the difference in church, God. Give these presidents help. Give these vice presidents a vision. Lift them up, God. Continue to bless their clubs. God, as we leave this place today, let us leave this place knowing that we love you in our heart. And as we come back next year, we're coming back bringing another hundredfold, another thousandfold. Because we know that this is a place of love and we know that we're going to be out here. And when we leave this place to bring that hundredfold, God, I know the Kingdom Nights motorcycle man probably going to go 10,000 miles each. So we can tell somebody that Jesus loves us. So we can tell somebody we got a place in their house. So we can tell somebody we ain't just in church. That's what the mother folks. Our mission is to ride up and down this highway. As long as they land concrete, we want to pull our mission into concrete. Sign so that people will know that we want you to have a relationship with Jesus Christ. We want you to build a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. We need you to build a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Because he got his arms open wide. And for this I want to say for Jesus Christ, we truly just want to say amen. 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 Thank you. We're going to exit through these doors. Amen. Again, I ask everybody to be patient and to be safe. Amen. Bikers, we're going to assemble. Amen. Amen. Outside the door, and we'll partake of our bike blessing. We ain't going to tie you up all evening long because it's a beautiful day.